when you look at the quarterly performance of Udominda on a YOY basis, a revenue uptick of 33%, a bit uptick of over 40% in a margin expansion, obviously, because of that, and a strong bottom line performance versus a loss in the corresponding quarter, same time last year. And you can't find too many faults there. The order bookings have been long as I read the brokerage notes. So lots to talk about to Sunil Bora, who's the group CFO of Unominda. Joins in right now to talk about this. Uh, Sunil, great having you. Thanks so much for joining in and congratulations on a strong quarter. Thank you. Thank you, Nidesh. Uh, put this into perspective. I, I mean, I was looking at um, other results. I was looking at uh, brokerage notes on your results. It's not as if the industry has had a strong growth. So what went right for you this quarter? I don't think uh, it's a matter of a quarter where we can say what went right in the quarter because the strategy which we have been working for years and years, I think that has been showing results. And it's not really about this quarter. You see, uh, last uh, many quarters, you will see that kind of outperformance, which is uh, continuing. The whole strategy has been that whatever industry grows or doesn't grow, how do we consistently grow? And there have been five, six key levers which we have been working for. And I think every such lever has worked, like your market share gain, your kit value increase, your premiumization play, your entry into some of uh, the export uh, segments. Uh, then you are increasing the EV proportion, which was not there. A lot of products uh, value add uh, consistently being done. So there have been, I think, a host of factors which you have been working to ensure that it is not only a quarter factor, it is actually a factor which has been working for years and uh, we hope that it will work for years to come. Mm, yeah, sure. I mean, I was since we are doing a quarterly conversation, I referred to it as a quarterly thing. But yes, I understand the fact that some of these things are long gestation in nature and the impact would last long too. So let's put this into perspective then. Um, if not because of the factors, but the question is that do you reckon that even if the industry were to not show strong growth, maybe because of global headwinds, maybe because the global economy stutters and sputters a bit, or maybe even in India, while the expectations are that autos will do well, if it doesn't do well, you reckon you will still be able to show industry outperforming growth for a better part of FY24? Absolutely, I think. And that has been our clear objective is industry grow or doesn't grow. How do we consistently grow? And if industry grows, how do we grow at least 1.5x of that growth? And that is has that's what we have been working on various factors, I said, in terms of uh, various strategies I just started out. Uh, yeah. All these factors do give us a conviction that not only FY24, but I would say even for next five years, uh, we should be able to outperform the industry by a big margin. What segments are doing well? Uh, let's say not just for Q3, but for the first nine months, what are the segments that have done well? I looked at notes and most segments, actually the growth is very high double digit percentage growth. So, but I would love to understand from you. Yeah, so uh, Neeraj, if you see from uh, starting from our main segment, which is switches, switches for both two-wheeler, four-wheeler continues to perform very well. Uh, we have a lion's share of business in the country, which is two-wheeler, we are almost 60% of the market share. Four-wheeler, we are almost 50 to 53% of the market share. So there we have been adding our kit value. On top of it, we have also been adding some of the customers in the export geographies, which have been providing that uh, additional leg of growth. We are currently expanding a, a plant or putting a new plant, green, brownfield plant in uh, Fowler Switch Business in Chennai. We are putting a greenfield plant in uh, north, uh, in uh, outskirts of Gurgaon, a place called Faruknagar. This business has been seeing very, very healthy growth. Coupled with it, we have been uh, able to increase our market share with some of our customers. In fact, a couple of customers where we have been weaker, I think we have been able to gain some market share. So that has also helped and provide that outperformance factor. Moving to lighting, lighting for again, uh, two-wheeler and four-wheeler. So two-wheeler, we have been very, very strong. We are uh, we are almost like 25, 26% market share. But in terms of four-wheeler, that was a space where we have not been strong in past. So we have been like only 12, 13%, which has now grown to 14, 15%. And this is a segment where we believe we can grow to at least 20% in next four to five years. Considering the technology aspect. So if you remember uh, past, we have been lower because, as you know, the lighting market or lighting business segment in India is the most competitive. You take the name, the global major is there in the country. Despite that, we have been holding on to the market share. I, I know it was uh, the third number market share, which is at 
11, 12, 13 percent. Today it is 14, 15. So we had an aspect of a technology uh, at play. So we acquired this company called uh, Delvis. It's a small te technology company three years back in December of 19. I think that acquisition has played a big role in expanding that business. So we are currently uh, commissioning our plant in uh, Gujarat for photo lighting. The board has approved another setting up of plant of roughly 400 crore uh, investment and photo lighting segment. So this is the segment uh, we have done well. And I uh, would assure you that we will continue to do well for next four to five years and we will have a significant growth in this segment. Moving to other segments uh, which have been doing well, seating has been doing phenomenally well uh, in both uh, the domestic market and export market, be it CV, be it off-roads, etc. Then we have some of the other businesses like below molding business where we just commissioned our plant in uh, south in Bangalore that has been doing well. The other business which is doing well is our airbags business. The board has just approved investments worth 175 crores uh, yesterday for expanding our airbags uh, manufacturing capacity. So there have been a host of businesses which uh, have been doing pretty well and the strategy which we have been working, I think they've been sort of playing very, very nicely for uh, all these products. On top of it, you know the kind of EV product specifically which goes into components into the two-wheeler and three-wheeler EV, that portfolio we are building is unmatched in the industry. So while the impact today may be not very much because the EV volume itself is uh, just three, four, five percent of two-wheeler and two-wheeler is half of our revenue. So from overall pie perspective, it may not be material, but whenever there is an upswing, this is something which will provide that additional delta over the base uh, revenues. So on top of the existing pro profile, which we all know, is agnostic to IC engine or EV engine. So that helps. So you have no risk at all of transitioning from IC to EV. On top of it, we have built that kind of a product profile for EV, which will provide that additional delta in the next uh, four, five years. So it was a little longish uh, <laughs> answer, but I, I, I thought it's better to cover the entire aspect uh, of the business. No, time is not a constraint at all, Sunil, for us. Uh, we love to hear details, to be honest, out here. Um, quick question, quick follow up there um, on two or three things. One is on lighting, I heard you say that you are you moved up from 11, 12 percent to maybe 14, 15 percent and you expect to move to 20 percent. Is Are there timelines that you set yourself internally for this and therefore does it mean that your revenue pie in the lighting business would move up about 33 odd percent from where it is right now? I won't comment on the pie because that's not the way we look at it because other businesses are also growing. But yes, this business... Okay. What I mean is the revenue run rate. Right. Yeah, the growth in this business will definitely be more than other business. So in, in absolute uh, pie terms, yes, it will grow. That will go to 33% or 30%. I think we have to wait and watch. No, I just meant that if you move a market share from 15 to 20%, leave out the pie. But so your the, lighting but business revenues, will they grow only, 33%? Yeah, this is only four lighting segment, not a two-wheeler. Two-wheeler, we have only 25% market share. Okay. Okay, so what's the absolute uptick in run rate that you yeah, reckon? Full oil lighting is say 600 crore business for a year. Hmm. This business actually can go 3x in the next four to five years. Wow, okay, okay. 3x in the next four to five years, great. And and um, the other pieces, the, the plants that you're setting up, some of them are getting commissioned, some of them are already commissioned. I, I know for different businesses, the utilization levels are different, but because investors invest in a single pairing, so to say, with multiple streams, I would just love to understand where are current capacity utilization levels and based on your conversations with global customers and domestic customers, where could these be like 12 months out? Because we know that the global economy is not exactly ship shape currently. Yeah. So in terms of capacity utilization, I will split it again into two parts. One is the four-wheeler segment, another is two-wheeler segment. Two-wheeler segment, we know that it has not been doing so well while we still firmly believe in the potential of this uh, segment and considering the growing aspirations of people in India, the kind of penetration we have, this business will grow. I think it's a matter of time where uh, this will turn around. But PV is a segment where uh, we are very, very bullish. And in terms of capacities, like uh, a four-wheel wheel segment is running almost at 100% capacity. There are some of the business which are running at 85-90% of the capacity. Uh, in fact, if you see the kind of growth we have delivered, we have not capitalized that kind of plants in the last year. So if you see the depreciation growth versus the top line growth, I think that itself will answer. So top line has grown by uh, year on year basis. It's almost like 34%, if I remember correctly. But uh, depreciation has not grown in that proportion. It's grown only 20%. And even if you see quarter to quarter, it's not, sort of a flattish. So that also helps uh, sort of clarify why we are running or why we've been able to deliver this kind of growth without commissioning too much of CapEx in last 10-12 uh, months. 
Okay. Okay. So Sunil, la uh, last two or three questions, and I'd like to pick up uh, some threads uh, from the notes that I read. One of the notes says, and uh, actually before that, can I come to the EV part? Because you mentioned that it's small currently and it'll grow. So you, what, incremental orders were 300 crores for EVs? The total order inflow for you has been 800 crores. So you rightly said that it's not a very large number. Yeah. When do you expect the delta to come? This delta will definitely start, already started uh, tricking in, right? But uh, the significant uh, volume ramp up you will see from maybe FY24 and 25 onward. Okay. So you reckon that the large portion of the growth from EVs will be FY25. FY24 could see some, but FY25 yes. will add the meaningful trigger to it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, one note says that you are investing significantly across the switch light alloy wheels and EV products, which you spoke to us about. But the note says that given confirmed orders, and I'm reading out, it should continue to outperform industry volume growth and stronger than expected EV adoption can lead to further upsides to our estimates. Yeah. Can you tell us, Sunil, internally, what are the kind of volume upsides or broadly annual upsides that you see to the kind of volumes that you will clock in, say, FY2425? So the way it works is uh, obviously we don't comment on revenue because 90% of our revenue goes in the line fitment and the end sale to customer by the OEMs is not in our hand and we never comment on behalf of our customers as to what the volumes will be. So whatever volume indications we have been getting, we work on that and see whether I am increasing my share of business in some of those products to sort of deliver the growth which is more than the industry growth. And mm -hmm. the way we do it is Say to, today, for example, you have a, a model, right, uh, from a customer. Now, all these models we know, they go for a facelift in four years, five years, six years kind of a time frame. So the way we look at is, say my kit value in, uh, if I take the top end uh, segment, uh, a D segment, say my kit value is one and a half lakh rupees. Now, that is the potential kit value where if all my products gets fitted into a vehicle, that's what the revenue it will generate for the company. But actually, it doesn't happen like it, right? So actually, the, your kit value might be, say, 70,000 bucks or 80,000 bucks. Now, when the facelift is happening, am I increasing that base of 70, 80 to 90, 95? That's what we can consistently watch because that would mean even if the vehicle number remains same, we should be able to deliver better revenue growth. Sure. And what we have observed mm -hmm. is that in last uh, 12 to 24 months, since we have centralized our marketing, we did our group restructuring, organization business restructuring, whatever we call OBT. Uh, in April of 2021. Since then, we have changed the way we look at this. Earlier, every business used to go to a customer. They used to look for the business which they are in. But we were not looking at a group level picture. So what we have been doing is, for the last two years, we have started seeing that group level picture for a model wise. And we are really happy to observe that for large part of the facelifts which you are going to see in next two to three years, we have been able to increase our kit value in most of them. That's what gives us comfort that we should be able to consistently outperform the industry growth for three to five years kind of a scenario, which is the visibility already we have. Sure. The problem, Sunil, though, I'm just thinking out loud, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that you may increase your kit value, but if the eventual customers' volumes are going down, that means that your revenue size doesn't go up. And from an equity investor's perspective, how the equity, how the revenue size grows is probably very, very important for her or him to decide about Absolutely. his or her investment. So that's why my question, I'm sorry I'm probing this to you a bit, uh, but yeah, do you reckon that? Right. Look, you ask this question as an equity investor. So I'm sure the investor will also think, where does he want to invest? Whether he want to invest in a business which will flow in line with the industry or whether he want to stay with the business which, yes, it will flow in line with the industry, but it will do better than the invest If industry, suppose, drops by 10%. Now, everybody will drop by 10%. Can I arrest that drop by 5%? Can I be flattish? I think that itself shows that outperformance. Okay. Um, we, but I will take this up with you the next time because I've already taken 15 minutes. So I understand you have to leave, but I just have one final question. But Sunil, we'll have to talk about this a bit more the next time we talk. But yeah. I have one final question, which is most people or most notes, the three notes that I read said that their estimates do not factor in the Bueller Motors JV or the ramp up in the ADA segment. Now, my question to you is, you have a bunch of global clients, global JVs, global supplies, so on and so forth. Uh, are conversations with global partners and global customers pointing towards a hint of caution? Or does it sound business as normal as of now? You have to split it in two parts. Does it sound as a caution? Yes, it does. 
have we been impacted in terms of volumes yes we have been because we can't be insulated by the globally what's happening in europe us etc right so yes volume wise there is a impact but what we have been able to do is say for example you have a switch order for a model we have been able to increase that penetration to more than one model right so even if the volume drops in 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 my existing businesses i have been able to add more than the drop from the new business that is what has been has helped us arrest that uh, overall revenue terms what a decline we have seen uh, globally we have not have uh, that actually actually we have grown in terms of our export revenues okay and, and you, if you are you... pi in the export revenues which used to be uh, 10 11% 5 years back today it is 17% of my total revenues yeah but you reckon that this might continue for 2023 because that's the year in question really from an so export market it's difficult to interpret uh, what uh, market is going to throw on you so okay. your job is basically to see how you not only uh, withstand that uh, storm which is facing but how do you sort of come out smarter and come out better hmm. okay well we wish you all the best that you do all of this and maybe at the end of quarter 4 and fy23 we might maybe have better visibility around how the year could shape up so would love to talk to you then about that absolutely thank you thank you very much thank you sunil and congratulations on a good quarter thank you and viewers thanks for tuning in thanks bye bye